Okay, we have four panelists. We also have a Jeff joining us. So oh, we, we obviously our aim is not to rephrase all what has been said. First of all, we would like to thank you all for extremely helpful and inspiring talks and case studies who gave us food for thought, uh, how to conceptualize and perhaps rephrase our initial thinking and regions of memory. What we would like to do now is to have a round of very brief comments from each of us as organizers on what we got from the discussion and then to open once again a floor for you if you would like to react once again and to give us some more help and criticism before we and, uh, and the conference. We will speak in, uh, uh, we'll start with Małgorzata, Simon, me, and Jeff, okay? Would you like, uh, you have your own. Oh, Małgorzata, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry, you can add. <laughs> okay, I, not to take too much time, I just will have a few loose remarks as a summary of all the discussions that we'll hear. Uh, first thing that uh, was very uh, well, well, that, that was a lot, appeared a lot uh, in the discussions, was the agency in the context of regions. So we could see that individuals and NGOs were uh, using the regional framework as a tool to uh, construct the, the new uh, narratives. Uh, and they, they were using the, re they were referring to the regional uh, perspective. Uh, when the national uh, became somehow insufficient. So this was uh, interesting. Um, another thing, um, we were using also, we were trying to define uh, regions uh, as a framework. This is what Joanna said at the beginning, that uh, as a framework that makes uh, recollections consistent, that helps to organize our recollections, our visions of the past. And I would, I would put it together with what Ji Hyun Lim uh, said about these orientation points. I th found it very interesting. Uh, he referred to the development in a debate, uh, Simon was taking part in the Cambridge project where cutting was such a memory event that was provoking uh, further regional uh, reactions. So these orientation points could be seen also as regional uh, frameworks for memory, forming some consistent uh, similar memories uh, within some uh, area. Um, and also, uh, we we had uh, relatively little uh, discussions about regional memories as a result of uh, entangled histories uh, within some geographically defined area, and this was actually surprising because if uh, we imagined such a conference, I don't know, a decade ago, this would be the obvious uh, theme of most of the papers, and here we had really very few of that. Uh, and, the, uh, and it seemed that instead we operated with the category of uh, regions rather as a metaphor. Uh, and for example, Alina Sierp, uh, you defined uh, the region as something where there's this ambiguity, liminality, and then this exchange of uh, different perspectives and this dialogue, this is what defines the region, and this helped you to define the European Union policy <laughs> as policy of regional uh, memory. Um, this was... Uh, it, yes, so, and he also mentioned uh, a borderland. So this is what is specific for a borderland, that we should concentrate on it. And this, uh, this is uh, how we could define a region used as a metaphor too. Uh, and also we had a lot of this, uh, there was, uh, of these presentations in the direction of, as you and uh, said about these unbound memories. So we spoke about regions uh, as prosthetic memories, traveling memories, unbound memories, where uh, some, um, some groups, some agents were borrowing different perspectives to represent their own uh, memories. And this was completely new and actually unexpected to talk about in terms of regions, but I think this could be uh, some new direct direction that we could develop. This would be it. Simon? Um, 
Yes. Uh, well, we also just use the word unexpected, and there are many ways in which, for me, uh, this con whole conference was unexpected. Uh, it was much better than expected. <laughs> we thought we'd chosen well, <coughs> but um, thank you again to all of you for, for making it so. Um, <coughs> Another way in which it was unexpected was that, uh, for me at least, I have concluded that this talk of regions of memory is perhaps a bit too simplistic. Uh, taking taking some, a lot of the papers as an aggregate, they've shown that configurations of memory are disparate and any observer's attempt to pin down any kind of borders seem a bit desperate. Uh, and futile, so I'm reminded of, of Eunice uh, talking about uh, Shiite memory extending to Orange County, um, Elizabeth Johnston talking about uh, the Pan-African uh, Rwandan memory actually originating from France, um, <coughs> and maybe, maybe this region is, is, uh, needs a bit of adaptation, a bit of work. Um, one way in which this region also uh, would would do would uh, would benefit from um, from some reworking is another surprising fact for me an unsurprising observation was that actually I've noticed something what I might call the the persistence of the national in all this we've, we've been talking about how we should go beyond the nation um, a lot of the papers were actually about how the nation is still quite important uh, maybe we shouldn't uh, overdo this nation bashing um, <coughs> so even though there were some explicit political projects, the EU, the, the, the post-Soviet memory that Nelly was just talking about, um, as uh, Pavel Mikhaparalsky, Alina Timan, um, Sarah Kare, amongst others, talked about uh, these national frameworks actually are quite robust, um, and maybe uh, we shouldn't dismiss it altogether. That's not to say this hasn't been useful, of course. Um, I think one way in which one thing we can take from this is, uh, is that these ideas of traveling memory, transcultural memory, can also be mapped. Um, Anne, Anne Rigney showed us some flight paths uh, as a, a metaphor of how memory travels, but also has, um, also has patterns, right? But I think one, th one way in which we might think about this is that there are flight paths, but we can also travel to specific places. If I'm in London, I can fly to a million different places, or a few thousand probably, but I personally mostly go to Europe. Um, so memories do travel in limited ways, in restricted ways. Um, <coughs> so maybe rather than regions, we can think about patterns of, mem uh, of memory, of, uh, of similar things happening in, in, in different places. Maybe they're close together, maybe they're not so close together. Maybe some of them are close together, but there's, but there's a few outliers. Um, so yeah, patterns, maybe constellations of memory, um, which can be mapped. Uh, and uh, there's a great book by ha Harvard Russianist Ju Julie Buckler, uh, Mapping St. Petersburg, um, which uses an idea of cultural mapping as a mapping a historical accumulation of textual meanings ascribed to physical and cultural space. And maybe that's something we can adapt to memory. Um, yeah, so that's it for me. Thank you so much. Oh, uh, I'll be brief, but I think we have been kind of uh, moving from the very metaphoric and unprecise sense of the term of the region on the one hand and on the other between some very concrete geographical sense of the term, and neither of us is... Uh, enough, uh, it's, it's not enough uh, for us. But uh, now I would like to stick to this geographical sense of the regions of memory. Uh, so what, what we had in that conference and also in the conference in 2012, we did have speakers speak, speaking on the cases of, of memories from different post-colonial spaces as Southeast Asia, East Asia, Eastern Europe, Caucasus, and from a different perspective, European Union as a, uh, uh, as a kind of the region, also in a geographical sense of the term. And I think there is some cartography to, uh, to, to memory still in the world, if we, if we think very simply 
if we simplify it even to to that uh, to that to that geography there are some common pasts there are some uh, communicative there is some communicative communicative networking to borrow your time time again and referentiality between this uh, these regions and also some common memory templates or to put it perhaps more uh, to complicate it to some investments in making the memory templates for the sake of the future. So kind of inventing the common past for, um, for, some, um, for some agenda. And so I would say that there is some cartography of memory and also I would think a bit more about the chronology of um, of global memory. So at the very beginning of the conference, Jeff spoke uh, and referred to the, to the waves of the memory studies. So the second wave was national and the third wave was more uh, transnational, multidirectional, more on global travels of narratives and uh, including the, 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 the universal human right post-Holocaust narrative. I think that these waves of memory studies, they also they might also bring us to the process on the ground. <laughs> so they also tried to grasp something what was happening. So the, 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 the first wave might refer to the processes of nation building in the 19th and 20th century all over the world. And then the, 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 the third wave to some attempts of making this globalized uh, narrative. But now, what we can observe, or at least we can observe in Eastern Europe, but also I think in other parts of the world, of some kind of interaction between the global narratives, not only on the national level, but also in this more regional framework, but again, which are not that universal. So the different regional constellation of reaction to globalized narratives of uh, uh, of, uh, of, my, of of different kind of memory and mainly of human rights, I think, if this is the, the, the most important uh, memory narrative in the world right now. Jeff? Thanks. Um, I didn't know I was going to speak in this last panel until five minutes ago, so uh, <laughs> scribbles here and trying to figure out what I want to say. Um, So Simon, I agree that, that the notion of regions is too simplistic, but so is everything. Um, we are, we're really good at complexifying, at critiquing, at undermining, at questioning, um, but at the end of the day, we have to do some analysis. Um, and so I guess I feel about regions, the famous quote from Winston Churchill, Winston Churchill about how he feels about democracy, it's a ridiculous, terrible thing, uh, but it's a lot better than what's ever in second place. Um, I don't exactly think that maybe regions isn't the right word, maybe we're talking about geographies of memory, maybe we're talking about areas of memory. So in the United States we have a discourse about area studies, you know, universities are questioning whether, there used to be these things called area, these enterprises that were very well funded, sometimes by the CIA, uh, called area studies where we wanted to know what's going on in that part of the world. Um, so I would say regions are real, right? We, I mean, and they organize our intellectual discourse, they organize our political discourse. We have the Journal of Baltic Studies and the Journal of East Asian Studies and the Journal of Scandinavian Studies and, uh, um, you know, 50 or 100 other kinds of area studies journals. So I still think that the concept is salient in some way, even if it's our obligation to complexify it. So I would say that regions are real, but we also know that regions are imagined. Not, I don't draw the same opposition some people do between real and imagined, nor does Benedict Anderson. Imagine, imagined is not imaginary for Anderson. It's still a cultural construct. So they're real, they're imagined, and they're insufficient. Um, but I still think there's something there with geography or cartography or discursive arena or communities uh, of discourse about the past. I think we can begin to analyze some of the things I've been thinking with all these wonderful talks is different ways to think about what would constitute a region. So sometimes a region is a geography. So for instance, the Caucasus or Scandinavia. 
um, s sometimes um, uh, a region is um, an, an arena of discourse. Uh, but discourse can, or uh, sometimes it's an arena of experience. So it could be that three or four or seven or 12 countries have a similar structural set of experiences. So that it might make sense to lump together the Ukraine and Belarus and Georgia and a couple of other places that call, as, as a set of areas or nations or uh, entities that have experienced Soviet domination in a particular way. Or, as is very use, you know, common, we can refer to the Baltic states, the, you know, Lithuania, Latvia, and Estonia. Um, sure, the differences are incredibly important, but by the same token, we understand that Lithuania, Latvia, and Estonia had some similar experiences with Soviet uh, domination, occupation. Um, you know, the same way we refer to the Benelux countries. We, we, we see them as so much a region that we don't even give them each identities, right? Um, uh, so I think that that's still useful. So there's the question of we can draw regions as areas that have had similarities uh, of experience structurally, but we can also talk about regions as regions of conflict. So when we speak about Northeast Asia as a memory region, what we're talking about is an antagonistic discourse. We're talking about South Korea and Japan and China um, uh, caught up with very different perspectives or in antagonistic relationships over a common past. So there are regions that are constituted by similarities of experience. There are regions that are constituted by discursive conflict. Um, you know, France and Germany, in a way, are uh, united by, uh, a, a, and, and Belgium and uh, uh, Italy and Great Britain, perhaps, by antagonistic notions of uh, the experience of World War II because they were on opposite sides. Um, but there's still a, a region, Western Europe, um, so I think as long as we're careful to articulate uh, what we mean by region, and I'm perfectly happy to entertain calling it something else, geographies of memory, cartographies of memory, regions of memory, um, communities of memory, I mean, they're not really communities, uh, discursive arenas of memory, um, you know, I think all of these have something to be said for them, but in a way I feel the same way about regions that I feel about the concept of collective memory is we understand everything that's wrong with the concept of collective memory. It's over-totalizing, it's a reification. We also understand everything that's wrong with nations, right? That there are subnational groups, there are borderlands, there are cross-cutting, uh, there are arbitrary straight line borders that mean uh, uh, nothing to the people who live on either side of them. Uh, as long as we take the same attitude towards regions, I think it's still got a lot to speak for it, so. I'm normally skeptical, but, but trying to keep my skepticism in check to make some analytical progress. Thanks so much. Would anyone like to add something? Yeah. Hello. No, no, no. No, no, I think you need to wait, wait for a mic. I'm sorry. <laughs> I saw another common theme that was kind of percolating under the surface, and it would be interesting to explore perhaps in future conferences. And um, this is on, and that's the idea of the economics of memory, memory tourism, um, you know, grant funding for certain projects and things like that. I, I think that that's come up a lot uh, during this conference, and. It's an interesting thing worth, worth some more reflection. Okay, thanks a lot. Anyone? Yeah. Um, I would like to ask you, you as uh, the organizers of the conference, how did you come up with the topic for the conference? Because uh, we've spent a lot of time discussing whether regions are this or that, uh, <laughs> but uh, I, I, I would just like to know how did you get to the point of choosing regions as uh, topic of the That's it. Okay, so I think we might have different memories <laughs> of how we, how we got to this region. 
I will share mine, and then we'll you know, share Mike with uh, with Jeff, Malkozat, and Simon. So, well, we had uh, the first conference. We had on genealogies of memory, and at that one, for what we wanted to do was basically to think about the concepts, the basic concepts as, I don't know, Nora, Lieu de Memoir, or the Asmans, and so on, and to see how uh, they work in the Eastern European concept. And, but well, we were not that successful with it. So we had uh, plenty of people who came and mainly were giving the case studies, not, were not so much reflecting on the theory behind the case studies. But what we have, what, what at that time, what we already realized is that the people do have, because we had the speakers from Eastern Europe, but we also always wanted to make it comparative, so we had it from somewhere other, from other places, that they have different sensitivities. Uh, and we wanted to somehow to grasp the sensitivities. And as network is regionally based, we wanted to grasp it within the regional but not national framework. So that's my memory and my explanation. I don't know what is. What about you? Pretty much the same. I was. I remember there was a lot of discussion about the the word to be used in the uh, in the title, but it's not very important here. <laughs> Simon, you organized the first one without me. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I also remember that uh, you, Jeff, didn't like the word ecosystems of memory. Ecosystems. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. We wanted also to localize memories, but then Jeff said, no, <laughs> you won't use that. So, yeah. You know, so we talk about traveling memory. We can also talk about traveling memory scholars. Uh, so I'm sort of looking out at the room and I'm trying to think, I, I think I've been at conferences in different regions of the world with lots of you, right? How many different, I, I mean, how many different places have we met? But each one in a different theme. And so, you know, if you do enough of these, you begin to see, well, Yes, there's something really going on in Central and East Central Europe. There's something going on in the Baltics. There's something going on in Israel and Palestine. Um, uh, and so there's something to be compared about these different, I mean, yeah, so they're networks, right? I mean, it, we, could, we could make one of those awful spider webby maps that some of my network sociology colleagues like to make about where we've met before and, you know, which of the conferences and the overlapping initiatives and networks um, and so that was just an effort to problematize it. I think that, that it's a lot less complicated a motivation than it may seem. It's, it's less, it, I think the notion of regions was not intended to have any theoretical weight or heft to it. It was just a way of thinking about that we meet in Stockholm and we meet in Jerusalem and we meet in uh, Santiago and we meet in Warsaw uh, and there are similarities and differences between the discourses in these different places. We certainly think about economies of memory. Thank you. Anyone else? Yeah. Yeah. Well, just to start with, thank you all for having brought us here together um, uh, in this new constellation, to use uh, Simon's term. But I think when you, Joanna, when you're raising the fact of how, how persistence the national framework is, I think it's extremely important to bear that in mind and keep relating it to our desire not to be so, be stuck in the, you know, go beyond uh, methodological nationalism. And, uh, and whatever we think about the idea of uh, the region as a, as a concept for working with, and I think there's reasons to think there's good, you know, there's good reasons to work with in other ways we might think alternatives, but the challenge remains the same, is what are the sort of terms uh, uh, are we going to use and what are the frameworks for analysis because I think this notion that you abandon the nation and then it's the global is clearly not adequate to describe what we're, what's going on and so I think the what's very clear to me after this conference is still that the challenge remains um, and, it, it, and it becomes all the more interesting to think about the different types of scales of analysis and which are the ones which are fruitful for actually understanding the agent who, who's at work, what's the re relative uh, you know, importance of, say, in my case, I'd be interested in the importance of the media, but in another case, what are the importance of memory actors, what are the importance of institutions like the EU. So I think if we're trying to sort of 
to, to advance that insight into those sort of processes, if we keep that in mind, then we can, I think, continue to explore uh, alternatives to just the global or the national uh, and keep seeing how they relate to each other. And for the moment, you know, I, I can't think at the moment of anything better than uh, uh, something like the region as this sort of intermediate structure. And I think we might want to think about different sorts of, you know, maybe the next conference would be about what are the alternatives to, what other sorts of intermediary structures do we have? That might be a way forward. Thank you. But above all, thanks. Thanks a lot. Would you like to add anything? If not, we would like to thank you all and also to thank the network who organized the, already the fifth conference and supported us with everything from food to flight. <laughs> and now I would like to pass the mic to Professor Jan Riddle, who is the Polish representative of the European network. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I will speak in Polish. Uh, dear ladies and gentlemen, only today I could make it and take part in this uh, conference, so I shall not uh, venture to um, summarize uh, personally. Although, um, let me say that the day before yesterday I spent the whole day at Buchenwald, so I wasn't far from the uh, topics, uh, uh, from the range of topics that you've dealt with, uh, at least today. Um, I'm sure that the, um, your papers, your um, presentations and the materials of the conference uh, will become the basis for some yet another unsuccessful uh, volume like the first one published after our previous conference. Of course, successful. Mm, I'm also sure that the current conference has uh, given us many important thoughts of food of thought for the future genealogies. I've had the word uh, that sort of electrified me, economics of, of, of memory. I haven't touched upon this aspect, I think. I, we haven't worked on it. But in fact, it's a matter for, for discussion in a broad uh, team of those organizing our conferences. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, my wholehearted thanks, uh, first of all, to the participants of this conference. Uh, to keynote speakers, if I may use this English term in my Polish uh, address, and thanks to ma uh, Madam Anne Rigny, to our, I would say, friend, uh, friend of this initiative, Mr. Jeffrey Olick, and to Derek Sire. I would like to thank all the presenters, all the participants of the conference. Mm, many, many thanks I owe to the team that has prepared the conference from the factual, uh, on the factual site, I'll name the names uh, sequentially in the sequence alphabetically, I think. Um, so I would like to thank Mr. Simon Lewis, Ms. Małgorzata Pakiel, and Ms. Joanna Wawrzyniak. I would like to thank uh, a great uh, Europe team of European network, um, memory uh, regions, and, and, and I would like to owe oh, this thanks, and I address it to Ms. Agnieszka Nosowska, Ms. Żanna Wyublewska, and Ms. Jadwiga Olkostki. And please pass my thanks uh, and my words of appreciation to the rest of the team. Of course, we have to thank the institutions that have been provided the funding and made it possible for the conference to be held, the Polish Ministry of Culture and National Heritage, uh, the Federal uh, Office of Bundesamt uh, of, 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 for Culture and Media um, and Representative and the Ministry of Human Resources of Hungary. And also institutions being co-organizers of the conference other than the European network. Um, so uh, Sociology Institute, uh, 
auf der Universität of Warsaw Freie Universität of Berlin and the Institute of Culture and History of the Germans in Eastern Europe. I would like to thank the interpreters very much for the effort. Uh, it's a very, very personal, personal uh, acknowledgement on my part. As I said, my personal uh, thanks and an apology. And also, I would like to thank the photographers for very creative interruption or, or, um, or hindrances. Uh, and uh, I would like to wish you all a safe uh, flight or travel back home. Thank you very much indeed. Last organizational remarks from me. Uh, those of you who uh, wanted to go to visit the Museum of History of Polish Jews uh, can go with Małgorzata. We will have taxis waiting at quarter past two. Uh, and so, so please find Małgorzata before that time and you will go together. There is lunch now. Uh, and if any one of you has the evaluation survey filled in, please hand them over to our desk. They will be very helpful. And thank you all for this wonderful conference.